everybody, this is Frank Hannon of Tesla, and you're about to watch Let's Talk Music. Hey, I'm Matt. I'm here with Frank Hannon, the iconic guitar player from the legendary band of Tesla. And uh, man, it's good to have you. Thank you for being on. Hey, Matt. Thanks for having me on your show. It's 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 great to be uh still doing it after all this time. Uh it's it's crazy. You know, time has just been flying by and uh it's hard to to believe that we're almost going to be able to say that we're going to be celebrating a 40 40 year anniversary here pretty soon of this stuff. Yeah. I I I understand, man, <laughs> cuz like we were discussing a little pre-show, I've listened to you guys for ever. And, um, I mean, I, I know you guys started in 84, um, but the, the great radio controversy and psychotic supper and all those that came out after that. I mean, I, I was in my teenage years and I was just like, yes, these guys rock. <laughs> and, and when I finally got to see you guys in concert, man, I was just, I, I had goosebumps. I mean, you guys are phenomenal live. Hey, thanks. And you said that you you just recently saw us on more of a, one of our more current yes. uh, tours. Yes, about a year ago. Wow. So you've been a fan of the band from like the old school days, but this was the first show that you saw was a year ago? That's awesome. <laughs> I know, man. It's, it's always been something's come up or some reason I couldn't make it or whatever. Or it was sold out. I mean... You know, it, it's it's always been just something. And this time I was like, I don't give a damn if what's going on. I am going to see these guys. And like I said, it was did not disappoint. And what kind of brings me to this is you guys are back for another Las Vegas residency because of just popular demand. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Um, in March of this year, we did five shows at the house of blues mandalay bay and eat, all five of those shows were sold out and uh we had prepared for those shows uh earlier in the year at at my house in california uh the band came and stayed at my place for a week and we practiced in the garage we dug up a bunch of different songs because we wanted to change our setup uh, our set, our song list mm -hmm. uh, to keep it interesting each night. So uh, we pulled out some songs that we haven't played in a long time and from that deep cut tracks, you know, and we put them in the show. And so I think that might be why they're having us back is because it was a huge success in March because we did that. And so we're going to do it again, coming up here uh, the end of September, beginning of October. Right. And you guys also just did a cruise, didn't you? Uh, yeah, we did. Excuse me. We've done the Monsters of Rock cruise. Uh, we've done probably, I don't know, 12 of them things over the years. Uh, I don't know why they don't just break down and call it the Tesla cruise. Because <laughs> <laughs> we've been the headliner of... The Monsters of Rock cruise uh, many times, and we've had some great, great experiences on there. This last one, um, Michael Shanker was on there yeah. and did his uh, did his uh, UFO classics. And then a highlight for me was with Adrian Vandenberg, who's one of my favorite guitar players. I got to sit in and play in his band. Uh, on an off night. And by the way, I wanted to send a shout out for people to know that Vandenberg is going to be on tour in the first part of 2024 uh, with Jeff Tate from Queensryche and Adrian Vandenberg. For those of you that don't really know, he was in white snake or whatever, but he, on his own, he's got some albums, the Vandenberg albums that are freaking awesome. And he's a great guy, great guitar player. And uh, I wanted to, to promote him a little bit on your show. I hope you don't mind, Matt, because Not at all, buddy. he's a killer guitar player. And he's going on tour next year and come into the States, which is a really rare thing for him to be doing Vandenberg in the States. Nice. Yeah, I just, uh, oh, uh, maybe a month ago or something, did a, 
um, interview with Udo Dirk Snyder from Accept. Yeah. And uh, he's actually coming here. So I'm looking forward to seeing him live because I remember balls to the wall when I was a teenager. And, you know, when I was talking to him, he obviously he's aged just like everybody else, you, me. But I mean, it was amazing. Awesome conversation. Uh, you know, talk to him over in Germany and um, man, I, I just, I love talking to musicians, period. I, I love what you guys do. I love what, you know, the shows that you put on the videos from back in the day with MTV. I mean, I remember when love song came out, you know, I was like, Oh my God, it's almost like a live show. It was just, you guys are like, like I said, just one of my heroes. I mean, your, your band is probably one of the best bands that's ever existed. Well, gosh, you're really making me feel very, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, sometimes, you know, when you're in something, you don't perceive it the same way as someone who perceives it from a different view, like from your view. So, um, you know, sometimes I don't realize that Tesla is that great. And I, I appreciate it. What you're saying um, I will say that we definitely worked hard on trying to write great songs. Um, when it comes down to the songwriting process of making those albums, we put a lot into it and put a lot of pressure on ourselves. And we had a lot of pressure from some key people like Cliff Bernstein, who managed Rush and Metallica. And he was a, a big wig and, and still is uh, in the music and had great ears. And man, he put a lot of pressure on us to write great songs. Like we would submit demos and, you know, they would they go, that's nah, not good enough. And so we would go back in and we worked really hard on those records. So I will agree with you to the point of, it wasn't easy. We worked really hard at it to try to be not necessarily great, but to write great songs that represented us and our genre of music, you know, yeah. it oh, took it, a lot. It shows. I mean, honestly, like I, I, I can't think of one bad song from you guys. It, it's everything I, I feel like has, <clears throat> like one I really wanted to touch on was Song in Emotion. You guys wrote that for Steve Clark after he passed away from Def Leppard. And that song, I think out of every song that you guys have written, touched me the most because I've been a Def Leppard fan since early 80s. Um, you know, I got the High and Dry album. I've got, you know, I just when um you know, adrenalized come out. I was just flabbergasted, but I mean, the the fact that you guys wrote such a just touching song about a man that was going through hell and you know was a phenomenal guitar player, it just really struck me. Yeah, well, interesting story is that. You know, we toured with Def Leppard on Hysteria when Steve Clark was in his heyday. And we were huge fans of his. And he was a sweetheart. He gave me my he was one of the first guys to give me a guitar. He he I couldn't understand a word he was saying. He had such a heavy accent and he was he was intoxicated. He's all oh, that. And he, he, he handed me a gift. He gifted me an SG guitar. And he was a, a sweetheart guy. We loved him. The song was already, though, being written about a different guy. It was being written about a street musician that we walked past every day when we were recording. Steve Clark hadn't died yet. Right. We were in the studio working on the lyrics and the music to that song in New York City. And we used to walk from our apartment on West 55th Avenue, two blocks to get to the power station recording studio. And we were there for three months. And every day 
we would walk past Carnegie Hall. Mm -hmm. And in front of Carnegie Hall, there was a guy who was out there. I think he was probably homeless. Just singing his heart out. Singing like opera songs. And people were just walking past him. Nobody paid any attention to this guy. But we would walk by and we'd see him there every day. And so the lyric, I see him there most every day. Right. And his guitar was written about that guy. Okay. Originally. So during that time, we were chipping away at the song. We got the phone call that our good friend, Steve Clark, was found dead in his apartment or wherever. And, and he had been, we had knew he was really sick and suffering from alcoholism. Mm -hmm. And of course that hit us really hard. So when we finished writing the song, we started adding the elements about a lonely man and his guitar and the guitar licks in the song that Tommy and I were trading solos. Mm -hmm. those licks we were mimicking what steve clark played on high and dry da -na 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 -na. those two string notes steve clark joe elliott used to describe steve clark perfectly as the two note wizard because steve clark would take two strings and play them together like photograph and and saturday night high and dry and let it go those licks that you hear that are Steve Clark's licks, 99% of the time, it's using two strings. Oh, wow. That was his style. If you break down Steve Clark's style, he always played two strings at once. They call it double stops, or I don't know. I don't know the technical word for it. So when we went to overdub the guitars on that song, if you listen to it, it's using two string licks that are emulating some licks that he played on high and dry awesome. and so that's where the steve clark dedication and the tribute really plays into on that song plus live when we used to watch him play he would always do this really crazy part in the show um i think it was before too late for love or or gods of war where it was like Bleh. And so at the end of Song and Emotion, I do a section like that with the Ebo, and it goes, Bleh. and then it's like a drone. We call it a droning effect. Right. Yeah. So there you go. That's that's the story. I wanted to share that with you because you were talking about Song and Emotion, our song, and um, that's an in-depth explanation of how it came together. Yeah, that's, I mean, like I said, that's, Probably my favorite song is speaking of which, um, what is your favorite song to play live? You talking about Tesla songs? Yes. When, when you guys are out there what ripping it up on stage, what what which one do you just really just like, oh God, I love playing this? Well, you know, they're all so different, you know, like what you give and love song and hang tough. Um, but if I had to say pick one, I would probably say modern day cowboy. Okay. Lyrically, it's still so relevant today, talking about you know the USA and the USSR and the foreign lands and the terrorist demands. And it's got some amazing guitar riffs that uh that we created that still are kind of hard to play. <laughs> so, you know, I gotta be on my game during the show to play those licks and uh it's challenging every night to play those. Right. And yeah. so we usually play modern day cowboy now, like early in the set, like maybe the second song and the crowd goes ape shit when we start it because they recognize the -da 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 guitar riff. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would have to say that's probably one of my favorites. Oh yeah. Um, speaking of giving away guitars, I actually talked to, uh, Mike Fitz not too long ago, and he showed me one that you gave him. He was... uh, the SG? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you know, I don't, 
Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I have to say, I have been pretty generous with with some friends, and you know, I never forget how it made me feel when Steve Clark gave me a guitar, and I've had some, you know, Dickie Betts uh, gave me an SG, and it, you know, when you give a gift of a guitar, it's kind of like maybe a, a, a cowboy giving a pistol to somebody or like, you know, a, a soldier handing over a sword, you know, right? it's like, it's, it's a gift that kind of has a meaning to it. And, um, but I thought I remember Mike Fitz buying that guitar from me. I don't know. Oh no. He, he just said that he, that he got it from you. I don't know if you gave it to him or not, but um, we, we had talked because you guys were, working with bad marriage uh brian's producing them and you yeah. know we yeah, had to... playing with them now which is yeah. great man you know, right. tommy's video is a is an amazing guitarist i'm really happy that a number one he's still alive and and kicking and and doing it and he's playing with those guys and so uh more power to them oh yeah so um i've i've noticed on your set list there's only four when there's five of you. What's going on with Troy? Uh, well, you know, Troy, I think, reached a point uh, with Tesla where, you know, he needed to – we needed to part ways. You know, things happen. Things develop over years. People change. People's uh, family lives, people's personalities, whatever. Um you know, Troy was an integral part of the band for many years. You know, he's still, uh, we take care of him financially and he's doing his thing. And, you know, we just uh, had to part ways. It's just the way it goes. Like, you know, I don't want to get into any details other than COVID was a very tough time for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, we took a major hit, uh, both financially and, uh, musically in general during the whole co coronavirus covid freaking lockdown period of time um and recovering from that was not easy right and uh stevie brown who plays drum with us drums for us now mm -hmm. um does a, a fantastic job has a very positive attitude full of great energy shows up plays the drums and kicks ass and um makes the uh the uh tesla machine function uh and that's that's about all i can say really so uh how did you guys incorporate stevie where, where did he come from um, Troy has hired Stevie uh, Brown. Troy has hired him multiple times over the years to cover for him when there's been other uh, occasions that Troy couldn't be there. Mm -hmm. And so we have history with Stevie Brown. And he's also a local musician in our hometown, which also facilitates the band getting together being together in a, in a local situation. We've known him forever. He was a young kid coming to our shows. Uh, his brother is a professional drummer, played in Dawkins for years. Oh, Mick uh, Brown. Yeah, he's Mick Brown's little brother. Okay. And he pounds the drums, and he plays the drums how we as songwriters want them to be played, and he does a great job at it. And so... Uh, it enables us to keep the wheels rolling. If you can get my drift, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a tour bus of twelve people living on a bus, and those wheels got to roll, and and the team needs people that will facilitate that, and that's what's happening. Awesome. So, man, I mean, it's <clears throat> you're you're here, like as you got, you just said, almost ready to celebrate forty years. I mean. Do you ever look back and say, I never thought we'd make it this far? Or do you ever look back and say, I knew we was going to do it all along? I, When I look back, 
I look back at a freaking roller coaster ride of a lot of ups and downs, a lot of great times, a lot of things that I still can't believe that we did. Um, a lot of great things, a lot of stadiums, a lot of opportunities that when I look back and think about, I'm very grateful and I just can't believe that we did those. <laughs> and I also look back at things and go, what the fuck were we thinking? Why did we make that mistake? You know, there's a lot of that, you know. Um, now, put aside looking back and just talk about thinking about today and where we are today and what the next couple of years might hold. I'm flabbergasted at how lucky we are when I look at posters of festivals that have hundreds of great bands on them and how many great artists have come and gone one hit wonders, how many, so many great bands have come and gone and whatever. And we're still able to do it, you right. know, uh, three guys from Northern California, two of them, me and Brian from South Sacramento, which is definitely not the music capital of the world. You know what right. I mean? All right. I have enough uh, small town Sacramento. boys that came from the ghetto and, and the fact that we're still able to sell tickets this amount of time in this day and age is, uh, is mind blowing. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can see that from your perspective, but from mine, it's like, I, I I feel like you guys could just go on forever. I mean, I, I know eventually you're going to retire and everything and the, and the band's going to end, but it's like <clears throat> the music you guys have made is just amazing. And um, I, I really can't think of like, one of my favorite metal bands of all time is Metallica. Um, honestly, I feel like the last good album that they made was Injustice for All. Uh, you guys, I, I can't stop. I, I listen to like all of your new releases. I listen to the old stuff and it's, it's just, <clears throat> I mean, it's almost like the Eagles or Led Zeppelin. I mean, you guys are in that class. Wow. Well, thank you. I, again, I, I really appreciate that, man. And I appreciate it because we do put a lot of energy and work into trying to write songs that we can believe in, and especially our singer, Jeff, man. He, he, he works really hard on his lyrics representing him and what he can stand behind. Right. And that's not easy to do, man. It takes a lot of energy and and concentration and focus not to mention coordinating the tours and getting everybody on the flights and the hotels and putting it all together people don't even realize the amount of preparation it takes to to do what we do oh yeah so um yeah it, it's uh it's a feat and i'm very proud of it and i appreciate what you're saying so i'm looking in your studio there is that your recording studio back in there uh that is actually a background i wish that was my recording studio <laughs> i was gonna say man you got some nice equipment back there <laughs> yeah i i wish no i uh I, I was using my own, my little logo, and I, I wanted to try something different. And I found this one, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. And, and you're not the first person to say that. <laughs> it like, looks legit, man. I was going to ask you if we could come over and do some recording. <laughs> oh, shit. See, now I want it to be real even more. <laughs> but no. Well, I, you know, so before a band can even step into a studio like that, the amount of preparation and and time and energy it takes to to create and write a song, just one song alone is it, it's, it's, it's difficult. It ain't easy. Right. So, you know, um, I will say that I'm proud of what we do for that. A time to rock is our latest single. Uh, the, the new live album is called full throttle live. We mixed that and we recorded the Aerosmith, uh, SOS too bad as a tribute we got videos that we made for those in my garage, uh, edited them ourselves. We're totally independent now. We do all our own stuff. Uh, we manage ourselves. Brian Wheat 
and he, you know, he runs a lot of things. He's in charge of a lot of things. Me, I'm in charge of more of like musical kind of things. And, you know, the team effort, it takes a team to put it all together. And uh, we're very, we're very lucky. We, we value our crew and our, our road crew, our bus driver, Frank's been with us forever. Our sound man, Steve's been with us for 20 years. You know, it's definitely a team effort. And so to wrap this up and get to what you were just talking about, it's like a team and it's like an athletic sport, you know, and we can only do it. We're only going to be able to do this. Like, you know, Tom Brady's not going to be playing football anymore. Right. And at some point, Jeff Keith's not going to be screaming and singing them songs anymore because physically you just can't do it. And physically, right. I don't know how much more I want to live on a bus, to be honest with you. So at some point, we're going to wrap it up and go out, you know, and I have to give kicks props the way they went out. You know, they yes. did their final show the, the other day. Yeah. They announced, hey, this is it. We're going to retire. Come see us at the Meriwether Pavilion. They made a big celebration out of it. You know, and I think maybe, I don't know, a couple more years. I don't know. We might We may do something like that. Oh, because yeah. ultimately we're going to have to wrap this thing up. <laughs> but right now we're on a roll. We're going to be in Las Vegas and we got, we got Lincoln city, Oregon coming up in November. We got two show sold out shows there. They're not sold out yet. So I want to invite all your listeners and watchers to come see us in Oregon. And uh, we're going to be hitting Florida in January and we're releasing a real to real uh, vinyl LP uh, reissue mm -hmm. for records today we're gonna write a new ballad it's called all about love we're gonna record that in february oh hell yeah looking forward to that release a solo album dave's gonna release a solo album brian's got a project he's working on so there's gonna be a lot of new music coming from all of us tesla me dave brian it's all there's going to be a lot of new stuff coming out over the next six months. Oh, yeah. All right, Frank. Well, I know you've been a busy man today, and hopefully, I'm your last one. Or if you got another one, I'll let you get to that. Um, again, I uh, just want to let you know that I appreciate your music, I appreciate Tesla's music, I appreciate what you guys do. Um, I have since I was about yay tall, man. Um, you, you, you guys have stuck with me and, and forever, and this has been, I've done 200-something interviews, and probably this is my favorite, man, because just who you are, who you're uh, Thanks, Matt. You know. Where, what, 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 uh, what town are you in, Matt, when we Columbus, come to you? Huh? Columbus, Ohio. Oh, yeah. We love Ohio, man. We play Hobart Arena. Uh, we play uh, Troy, Ohio. Um uh, we just played Ohio with the Nelson twins not too long ago. Yep. And uh, yeah, well, Matt, come to our show. Give me a hug. We'll uh, hang out. And uh, I appreciate you having me on your show, man. And uh, until next time, my friend. All right, buddy. You have a good evening. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Do you, do you, uh, are are you going to edit stuff? Do you want me to do like, what's the name of your show? Let's Talk Music. Let's talk music. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. So you can maybe move this around. I don't know. I don't know. Can you cut and paste on your thing? Yeah. All right. Let's talk music. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. All right, buddy. You take All care. Right. Bye.